Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Euro Bureau kleptocrats cause strike ahead of next week's budget summit EU looks to legislate on the privatisation of railways Poland sees funding freeze pending massive EU fraud investigation Chancellor Merkel challenged by Euro courts welfare benefit block for immigrants plus UK opinion poll almost 80% want immigration block I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news First, from our homepage. Well, you really can't make this stuff up. Ready the engines on the Heidelberg, Mr. Draghi. Me, we may well need further fiat financial fudgery. Apparently, the EU Commission officials aren't very happy with their €2,300 Euros a month and are planning to action their complaint via a strike. This article has the full story and gets even more bizarre when you see that officials on €16,000 a month are also supporting this action. Given the plight of the Greeks, Spaniards, Irish et al, there can be only one response. Mr Barker, if you could be so kind please. Fuck the wook! These feeky chuggers are pegging the tiss! <laughs> EU regulators are seeking to deregulate the passenger train markets across the EU. This article looks at the draft legislation. So, what's really going on here? Well, take a look at the UK post offices for a recent example, or our own railway service British Rail, or indeed our energy industry. The EU is covertly creating an asset sell-off and wealth redistribution. It first legislates for deregulation, which means privatisation, which means selling government-owned assets, which means taxpayer-owned, which means you paid for it, and therefore you own it. The sale goes to the private corporations, French energy companies, German postal services, as in the examples above. The final part, the beautifully clever and nefarious part, the EU then creates a centralised regulatory body which it mandates control through legislation. In this case, it will be the European Railways Agency. Et voilà! As if by magic, you've liquidated the asset, taken the money and gained centralised control all without even a murmur from the sleeping populace. Polish building contractors have apparently been on the take and the EU Commission has chosen to investigate a potential 890 million euro hole into which the funds have apparently vanished. The investigation has resulted in halting of a road building project causing layoffs and possible job losses in an already struggling construction sector. Links to the article are below. Tens are rising throughout the Eurozone as the promise of open borders for Bulgaria and Romania looms. The EU PR machine has been busy on YouTube promoting the virtues of such a move and indeed makes the point that in Romania alone there are 12.5 million Roma, the native nomadic gypsy people of Romania, and that the EU is proud to enable their free movement and integration throughout the Eurozone. Of course, the quiet voices of the silent majority are not so content. Following our article from yesterday about immigration swamping the NHS, we see that Germany is also deeply concerned and has attempted to impose restrictions on welfare benefits provided to immigrants. Of course, such laws are unlikely to be ratified when tested through the EU courts. This article considers the rising tide of discontent and the growing resentment of the UK immigration process. Apparently 79% of those asked said we must ban EU migrants. Well, I've said this before and it's a very important point. The media makes a distinction between EU and non-EU immigrants, often using non-EU migrant statistics to placate the public with what appears to be more favourable figures. In this article, it is made very clear that we are talking about Eurozone member countries having the right of free access through the UK borders and our social, health and welfare services. The people are sending a very clear message to David Cameron that they are not at all happy with this arrangement. In my view, this is simply an ongoing attempt to fragment our culture, dilute and subvert our belief system and largely appears to have worked. How often do you see people pushing into queues? 
Where has our British etiquette gone? How many languages do you hear when you walk down the high street of your town? And have those groups mixed and integrated, or have they corralled and forged microcultures of their own? Have you, like many others I know, simply given in and said, well, if you can't beat them, join them, and let go of your polite, well-meaning British cultural values? What you are experiencing is the assimilation taking place, from independent nation to a region of a federal superstate. Is that what you want? Is that what you voted for? You can be part of the solution. You are the resistance. It is through your voice that others will regain their voice and through those voices that we can bring about change. Spread the word. Tell your friends about the unit. And remember, we have an array of speakers itching to come and talk to you and your friends. Contact us through the word section of our website to make the arrangements. Today in our video library, Dr. Eric Edmund takes an analytical view of the French car industry as it struggles with the economic implosion. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter, our Twitter username is the e Unit, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.